The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading with the opening bell, but they're already starting trading this morning. Markets in higher territory. I have a one minute chart here. The S&P usually pull these one minute charts up when we got some economic data and we got CPI out this morning. There's a lot in there to break down in terms of where the pockets are rising of inflation, where they're decelerating. Nonetheless, the, the numbers come in pretty much in line. Interesting that we get some volatility. We spike higher to 45.25. You trade down 30 points and we get it all back in the, span, in the span of about 35 minutes from when those numbers were released at 8.30 a.m. this morning. Nonetheless, what you have is you have higher markets, folks, with the S&Ps up by 35 points. NASDAQ 100, you're up by more than a full percent right now. You see the volatility in the NASDAQ 100, right? You're talking about 100 points down, 100 points back up. We were already in positive territory coming into these numbers. Excuse me, with the NASDAQ 100 up by more than a percent. The Dow, almost back to those spike highs, up by 233 points. That's six tenths percent at 35,429. We get the Russell up by about three quarters percent, trading at 1952, 15 points in the positive. Crude this morning, a little bit of volatility. We'll jump around to yields, we'll jump around to the dollar. Why not? Let's jump around to the dollar first because it's so important when we look at some of the currencies and commodities in particular. Dollar index. 102.11, you were all the way down to 101.74. Dollar index off 37 pennies right now at 102.12. You jump to that crew contract right now, a little bit of weakness. We were above 84. We were inching towards almost 85 last night. Energy going to be an interesting part of the inflation saga as it seems like we got higher prices, man. That's a one minute chart that I have. And it's important to keep in mind, right, that we are looking at numbers right now for the month of July. OK, and that is looking at numbers for July. Well, folks, you had actually prices in the 60s to begin the month of July in the 60s to begin the month of July. We're trading at almost eighty five dollars right now. OK, so, yes, the trend has been higher. But realistically, that trend really taking shape in terms of late in the month that we're pushing 75, 80. We're now pushing almost eighty five dollars for crude. Energy prices may be one of those pockets that weighs on the inflation saga as we press forward. You have gold this morning, back to a short-term time frame. There's your close uh, yesterday. There's 10.30 yesterday, excuse me. You close out the action of gold at about 19.47. This morning, we're up about $7 at 19.57. Gold with a little bit of volatility as well. And we got to get to yields. Chopping around on the inflation data, but pretty much where we are right when we came into that data point with yields trading at 111.17. You're up by five basis points. And we got a 10 year flirting right near about 4% right now. You jump over to the volatility index. 15.18 is a little bit of volatility, gets sucked out of this market. We got markets trading higher. It's going to be an interesting Thursday, man, as we got a lot to digest this market. Not quite sure what to read into these numbers, man, as we march forward is. September the pause? It might be, man. They might have enough ammunition to at least make the case that they pause for a meeting. Maybe they pause for one more. Nonetheless, let's get into the numbers. Try that one more time. There's the numbers. Uh, we'll break it down in terms of month over month, year over year. CPI, headline number, month over month. And you can see how close we are, right? I mean, check out these numbers. I'm going to blow it up even a little bit, okay? Everything basically in line except for CPI headline year over year, slightly below the estimate. So month over month, we're coming in at 0.2%. Year over year, you have the headline number at 3.2%. You got the core number still at 4.7%. Yeah, some big numbers there, uh, to say the least. Now, breaking down some of the numbers as we go into it, okay? Pretty much in line with estimates. This is the Bloomberg Live Feed, and I backed it up right till 830 just to give you some of the hot takes as we came out of this number, cherry picking some of what came out at 8.30. 
a little weaker than expectations on the year. We went over that, right? 3.2 versus 3.3. Uh, they break down. So shelter costs contributing about 90 percent of the increase in July CPI. The tough part here is that you're going to see some rotations, though, in terms of shelter. You're seeing housing, et cetera. But that could be seeing a potential bottom. I mean, how's that play into things? How do energy prices play into things? We also get weekly jobless claims this morning at 830. That number ticking up. 248,000. The number they were looking for was 230. So we got a little bit of a hot jobless claims number. In the context of what matters, the CPI is what matters most versus a 248 number for the jobless claims. Shelter cost increase is expected to wane in time, incorporating the slowdown in rents that happened a year ago. But housing costs further out are more of a question mark if the housing market keeps bottoming as it has been. So that's the interesting part, right? We all know that there's a lag in rents, and that's probably going to be slowing as people work their way through the leases and factor in the appreciation of those assets that they're renting. But we're now in current, um, approaching the area that we've had a slowdown for a year, maybe a year and a half, wherever you call it. As we go out six or 12 months, what if the housing market starts gaining, right? Food prices were also up. Four out of six major grocery store food indexes increased on the month, okay? They talk about treasury yields. Without rounding, and I always say this, they should include the without rounding because, man, there can be some massive differences when you're talking about a 0.2% number. Well, tell me if that 0.2% number, is that a 0.16 or is that a 0.24, right? Well, core CPI, 0.16% in July with a reading of 308.801. Not even really sure exactly what that means, that reading. Lower than the consensus of 308.941. So that's where you get a slight difference. It's actually slightly lower. Core CPI for the month comes in 0.2% versus 0.2% expected, but the number they expected was a little bit higher, breaking it down to the decimal points, okay? Fed swaps, pretty much in line, man. Okay, pretty much in line in terms of the percentages, probability that there will be a hike in the next meeting. I think we're at 9% or 10%, something like that. Maybe those numbers are in here somewhere. Energy prices falling in July reading from the prior year. Overall, it looks like this component drove uh, less of the index than expected. Gas increased 0.2% and electricity prices fell. Meanwhile, natural gas increased 2% over the month, following five consecutive monthly, monthly decreases. I mean, keep your eye on that one, man, okay? Gas increased just 0.2%. Uh, excuse me, yeah. Gas increased just 0.2%. That is going to go up in the month of August, folks. No doubt about it. The price of toys fell by the most on record last month. They were down 2.9% for the month. I mean, I've been doing my best, folks, to put those toy prices up. I've been buying some toys at Target, man. Uh, no, I kid. Half-wittingly kid. Uh, you know what's interesting? I'll tell you. We'll keep going over these numbers. I digress. So we'll talk a little bit about Target later. Uh, housing at school. You send in your kids to college or prep schools. Housing up almost a full percent in July from June. Biggest gain since 2004, as I said. Um, pockets in here. Rents, the biggest and therefore most Important component of core inflation, owner's equivalent rent, rose almost half a percent in July. Slight acceleration over June's 0.45% increase. Primary rent, on the other hand, rose slightly less than June's increase. We'll keep breaking it down, folks. we got a lot to talk about. we got to get into Disney earnings as well. We take a look at Disney as we come into the break. Disney, up about a couple dollars. They're raising prices. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Don't go away. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at 
TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago. And the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Market's holding up pretty well right now on that CPI number. We get the s and is up a solid 31 points right now. NASDAQ 100 up almost a full percent, trading up 145. You get the Dow right now up six tenths percent. And you get the Russell up by about six tenths percent as well. Jumping back to some of those cherry pick numbers of the CPI. Uh, the broader tra trajectory, okay, of these components is lower, but today's data shows that disinflation may prove choppy from month, month to month. Excuse me. And as you see, right, owner's equivalent rent actually rising at an accelerating rate over June. Maybe you got some bottoming in prices there, okay, as that's going to persist. Nursing homes, adult day services surged by the most on record, 2.4%. Talk about some numbers, man. Uh, no, and it wasn't 9%. There it is. Okay, so it's the Fed pricing, and this was as of 845, okay, but not much a move of a move in terms of the probability of a hike. And I, I'd say that's probably pushing it, man. I don't think they're going to hike, folks. If they paused and then they hiked, it would make sense. Maybe they're taking off a meeting at least. Anything can happen with the data, but we're seeing data that's pretty much in line right now, okay? We got a headline number of, what did I say, 3.2%? Is that where we're at? I think it is. 3.2%. That's the headline inflation number, man. You can break down the core, but we're at 3.2%. They've been hiking since March of last year. The fastest, steepest hike in my lifetime, to say the least. Yeah, they can probably take a meeting off. Uh, nine basis points of a hike were priced in for a November meeting compared with 10 yesterday. That's nine out of 25 is another way to put that, right? If 25 were baked in, it would be 100% probability. You do the 9 divided by 25, and you're talking about about a 36% probability of a hike. I think that's too high right now. That can change dramatically as we get data. I think that's probably too high right now in terms of what the Fed may do. In that September meeting, I think they're leaning towards a pause, even though they haven't quite indicated so. They have, but you get the point. We still have almost a 40% probability of a hike, right? doesn't seem like that's probably going to be the case when we come forward. Uh, yes, so breaking in some of the areas, this is what I want to get to. So we're going back to 8.47 in the morning, okay? But Bloomberg's got some great takes, man. I am a big fan of Bloomberg, and, and on days like this, I always love some of the live feeds, some of the analysts they have in here, some of their reporters breaking down some of that data. 
one sign of trouble. Don't say super core. That's not where we want trouble, man. That's 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 the, the bread, the butter. That's everything that Chairman Powell is looking at. Super core prices, a gauge closely watched by Fed Chair Jerome Powell, rebounded in July for the first time since September. What? The figure which measure, measures service prices minus energy and housing, okay, follows a June reading that increased at the slowest pace in 18 months. Uh, you got to have the Bloomberg terminal to pull this up. That's how they try and get you in there. My dad can maybe pull some of that up on his program later today. Uh, super core components, what drove the numbers nonetheless? Yeah, um, actually rebounding super core prices there. 0.19% on the month. Not great, especially compared with the flat reading in June. So super core was flat in June. Now it's up 0.2% this month. And it had been hitting about 0.5% in the last year, though. So obviously, well off those numbers. Yeah, core services excluding housing, a similar gauge that also excludes medical services, okay, which have been affected in recent months by changes in health insurance pro profits, actually reaccelerated on a monthly basis, rising 0.4%. So this is a similar gauge that excludes medical care services, okay. That calculation the one that rose 0.4% and reaccelerated is more consistent with the inflation gauge the Fed officially targets, which is based on the prices of personal consumption expenditures and isn't affected by health insurance margins. Okay, so personal consumption expenditure, folks, factors in more of those costs. That's what the Fed likes to pay attention to more so, and that is where you see some reacceleration. It's, it's it's there's so many data points. There's been stuff for everybody up there, right? In terms of there are so many pockets of this economy that are accelerating or decelerating. Which one is going to win out? And so many of these data points, whether we look at in one essence, we'll get the jobs number, right? And it'll be a weak jobs number. But then you'll get a hot wages number within the jobs number to say, ah, oh, there's something for everybody to make their case. It's almost the case here. You're pretty close to in line. You got pockets of acceleration. You have pockets of deceleration. Uh, and people are going to make their arguments as we go forward. And I would agree. Let's see. So the chief economist at Santander U.S. Capital Markets, uh, Fed's got to be encouraged. I think their intention is to skip September. I would agree at this time, man. Uh, certainly not the last word. Well, if you think it's the last word, you haven't been paying attention, right? We got a lot of ways to go. Doesn't mean that you can't stay. I mean, I love, you know, our man Kevin Hicks is on vacation this week and last week. And we're coming into that, you know, end of August. We're very fortunate to have him, folks. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, and of course with Fast Market at noon Eastern time every trading day. Uh, what he always says is keep it current. Don't go too far out into the future, man. That's where things get really difficult, right? So keep it current. Look at where we are right now. Don't be afraid to change your mentality and bias with the market. And right now it seems like uh, there's enough there that they can pause again. They already paused once. Don't tell me they can't pause again, right? That has given them the room to maybe pause for a meeting. The disinflation trend has gathered some momentum. Core CPI, 3.1% annualized over the past three months, the slowest since September of 2021. That's down from 4.1% and 5% in the previous two months. Now, that's a big number, man, when you see it. Yeah, and even, I mean, check out Bloomberg's headline. No, is it the journal's headline? Hold on. Yeah, this was that I was looking for from Bloomberg. And this is what the, the Fed is going to see, for sure, in terms of giving themselves the ability. Core CPI posts the smallest back-to-back -back increases in two years. You got back-to-back 0.2% -back numbers on the core. You multiply that by 12, you're at 2.4%. Fed will take 2.4% all day right now, and they'll stop uh, hiking, and they'll probably start cutting if we're at 2.4%. Doesn't mean we're exactly there, okay? But those types of headlines give the Fed room to pause again, I would say, and check it out, right? This is CPI excluding food and energy. Food and energy. That's your core number. Fed's got to love those two, man. They got to love it indeed. Uh, we'll see where we go from there. Like we say, we got a long way to go. We're still up 3.2% from an annual basis. Those are the four numbers that we went over as well. And yeah, I would say that that is a uh, overpriced probability that the Fed is going to be hiking in September, at least where we are right now. The data we got right now and you have a huge chunk of that being housing costs that have otherwise moderated since the start of the year. Used car prices fell for a second month. 
airfares posted the biggest back-to-back -back decline since the start of the pandemic as you got airfares down dramatically in there as well. And jumping back to some of those numbers. They're talking about yellow trucking in there. That's going to be 30,000 workers that are coming down the line at some point. We did talk about the jobless claims number, 248,000 from 230. So you're going to hear a lot of talk about disinflation. Disinflation. Yeah, this is the hang on this one, right? The disinflationary trend anticipated by markets is pinned on shelter CPI starting to fall while other CPI components remain low. It's a big ask with inflationary pressures rising, something our markets are not priced for. So we'll keep talking about this, folks. Yeah, I would agree. September's a skip. Nothing in there is going to is gonna make them hike again, folks. Um, so we see. We got one more month of data. We'll see what August reports, right? But stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the open first. We'll take a look at Disney next. Stay tuned. Tigers. Candlestick pattern analysis is a primary tool among successful traders, and you should be no different. Candlestick patterns can demystify buy points, sell points, general price movement, and so much more. At 4 p.m. on Monday, August 14th, trader Teddy Kekstat will be hosting a live, hour-long webinar on Japanese candlestick patterns. Teddy, the author of the Tiger Forex Report, has been trading for 33 years, and candlestick patterns have been instrumental to his success. For just $97, see how to use candlestick patterns to analyze stocks and options in order to capitalize on market swings, increase your odds of success, and decrease your risk. During this live webinar, you will learn when to use and when not to use Japanese candlestick patterns in this volatile market. Dispel the myths about this strategy and see just how much the mastery of candlestick pattern recognition can impact your trading. Visit TFNN.com today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the markets right now in positive territory, but pulling back from those highs. I still got a one-minute chart up here. You see the acceleration, making highs at about 9.05.
and we open and we're trading up 22 points right now in the S&P. It's trading at 4507. We jump over to the NASDAQ 100. You're up by 100 points, but you give up some of that gain as well. 15,276. Market's dropping a bit on the open. The Dow catch is a little bit of a bit actually up 200 right now in the Russell. A little bit of a divergence across the board. Russell pushing almost the pre-market session lows at 1945 right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, we jump over to Disney. And yeah, it was an interesting quarter. They miss on numbers for subscribers. They beat on profit. Uh, they record a $2.65 billion one-time charge. They catch a little bit of a bid on the open with the market right now. Disney up by 3%. So they, I think they missed by like 10 million. They, they had a 7.4% decline. I'm jumping around to a couple articles here. Um, first of all, they had a $2.65 billion one-time charge and impairment, okay? So that brings their profit down for the quarterly on a big way, of course. Subscriber losses continued over the last three months with the company reporting 146.1 Disney Plus subscribers during the most recent quarter. That's a 7.4% decline. The kicker in there is Hotstar over in India. They lost the rights to Cricket, that pushing their subscribers down there in the millions. Even domestically, though, they lost 300,000 subscribers domestically. I think the market was looking for them to lose about 100,000 domestically. Uh, a bright spot, the parks, experience, and products division is what they call it. 13% increase in revenue to $8.3 billion during the quarter. That's almost $100 million a day in that one division. Pretty interesting how that comes in. And, yeah, so getting into these numbers a bit. So Hotstar alone, they saw a 24% drop in users after it lost out on the rights to the Premier League cricket matches, okay? So they knew that was coming. What is interesting is I was listening to the numbers last night after the bell. They come out with the numbers. One of the analysts is saying, yeah, well, the reason why they missed so much in the subscribers is Hotstar. Then why did they miss so much? Why didn't the analysts know that that big of a drop was coming? Maybe they did. Nonetheless, it was a big miss in terms of subscribers where they came in. Um, 151.1 million was what the market was looking for, and they missed by about 5 million subscribers. That's what, 146.1. I'll pull up. I'm on CNBC first for some of the numbers here. We're going to jump to a journal article next. Revenue, slightly under what they were looking for. They beat on earnings $1.03 versus $0.95 cents a share. And Disney Plus total subscribers, 146.1 versus 151.1. Uh, there was a time ago, folks, that missing by 5 million subscribers would have sent this stop tank, stock tanking. But that's not the case because that's not what the market's focusing on right now, man. So you had Elemental, which was out, cost $200 million to make, stalled at the box office, $423 million globally. You had Indiana Jones, cost $300 million to produce. Not including marketing costs, tallied just 369 worldwide. Uh, the performance of some of our recent films have definitely been disappointing. As you'd expect, we're focused on improving the quality of the films. Yeah, they got to turn around. I've talked about, man, Disney, you know, pull up the slate of their movies, folks. They put it out there. They have a schedule right now that pushes, I mean, they push some of, like, they got Avatar 6 scheduled in 2030 or something like that. I'm not even exaggerating, okay? But there are two Star Wars movies coming. And that's probably going to be a bright spot for Disney, assuming they have the other parts of that ship running right in terms of really coming back to the box office. Haven't had a Star Wars film, I think, since 2019. And you're going to get two of them, I think, within the same calendar year. Now, that can all change with the writer's strike going on right now as well. Uh, but nonetheless, now jump into the next article we got here from the journal. This is breaking down some of the action. A little bit of a bigger picture, though. Talking about Iger, second show on the road, streaming price increases. They're jacking up the prices, man. So this is where you're seeing differences, okay? And they talk about Netflix versus the S&P 500 versus Disney. You got Netflix the darling over the last 12 months. Now, boy, it was quite a haircut over the last 12 months before that, right? But Netflix up almost 100% in the last 12 months. S&P's up 8.5, Disney down 19% over that same period of time. Iger has come back. Chappick is out. Now, what's interesting here is they're going to the ad-supported deal, right? They lost 300,000 subscribers from the domestic Disney Plus service. That's what I was talking about. Market was looking for them to lose about 100,000 subscribers. So they have 
disappointing revenue from the direct consumer business. Total revenue grew 4% of the year, $22.3 billion. The stock recovered during the conference call, okay, which they announced an increase to the prices. The hikes are targeted by design. Subscribers to the ad-free tiers are going to see their rates go up 20 and 27 percent, while prices for the company's ad-supported tier tiers won't change. They are putting the press on people that are paying for no ads. The reason why is is that they make more money per user off the people who are in the cheaper ad-supported version of their app versus the people who pay for no apps, okay? The advertising marketplace for streaming is picking up, Iger said on the call. Netflix noted in its own investor call that cheaper ad-supported plan generates a higher average revenue per user than its standard plan, which costs more than twice as much on a monthly basis. Advertising, right? I mean, think about how much Facebook makes per user, and they got billions of users, they can never ever, it's something like 50 bucks a user some, sometimes. It rarely varies by quarter. But they got like everybody in the world using their product and they're making 50 bucks a, a user. And if I'm exaggerating, let me know on ballparking folks. But yes, you can make a lot more money by charging less and hitting those people up with advertising than making all your consumers pay. I mean, ask Elon how the, the check mark's going for $8 a month. That's not gonna support Twitter folks, okay? It's not gonna happen. The revenue of that type of business plan doesn't exist. So it's interesting to see that advertising is the way of the future here as they go. Now, you had Disney striking the deal with Penn Entertainment yesterday. $2 billion deal, that's over 10 years. They're gonna use ESPN. They're gonna get into sports gambling. Uh, Iger talked about getting rid of some of the legacy networks like ABC and FX. That one's gotta happen. Now, they talk about in here that Iger mentioned, okay, any strategic move with its TV networks, like ABC, like FX, would need to preserve its ability to produce content for its streaming op operations. That will make any such deals complex, to say the least. Listen, they're going to be complex, but they're going to offload those. You're seeing it. He is on a mission right now, Iger, man. And I think that this is an opportunity at this share price, folks. I'm even thinking about it from my newsletter. Disney trades lower on the open. You're at 88.56. But you're seeing the shift here, right? They miss on subscribers, but what's the what's the focus? The focus here is they're getting it to ad supported tiers. They're focusing on cutting costs, um, and yeah, that's what this market needs right now for Disney. I imagine, especially when you see how it changes in any other universe. When we were back in the days of streaming being the holy grail, they would have gotten punished dearly. But that's not what the market's focusing right now on, and I think you're going to see it. He's got a deal done with ESPN, and listen, I have. Disney in retirement already, okay? Disclosure for what it is. Longer term, you go out to where they're pumping out big hits, all right? They're gonna ditch ABC, they're gonna ditch FX, they don't need them, they need to make production houses for their streaming platform, focus on the parks. Disney, up by 1%, markets up by 1%. Stay tuned, folks, we'll be right back. Successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report.
New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We put things on a 10-minute chart. You see this market charging high right out of the gate from 9.30. S&P is pushing basically session highs right now, up 38 points at 45.23. That's almost 9 tenths percent in the positive. NASDAQ 100, just over that 1% mark, up 156 points. Dow right now at 9 tenths percent in the positive. Russell, a little bit of a laggard, up about 4 tenths percent. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks, see how we're kicking things off. Apple shares, up about 8 tenths percent right now. You jump over to Amazon. Whoops. Amazon catches a bid up by 1.2% right now. You jump over to Microsoft shares up by 1.1%. Yeah, Google shares, the whole market right now, um, outside of any individual equity news, up about 1%. You got Google shares up one and a quarter percent. Meta shares up one and a quarter percent right now. You jump over to Tesla, catches a little bit of a bid up by 2.3%. We jump over to some of the airlines, United, barely in the positive right now. Delta up by a percent right now. American Airlines barely in the positive. We jumped to some of the banks on the heels of that inflation data. JP Morgan up half a percent right now. Bank of America up by half of half a percent. Wells Fargo up by about nine tenths percent. We jump back to Disney. They almost give it all back, man, on those numbers. Excuse me. Interesting in terms of the reaction with the positive market, right? Markets are up one percent. Disney can't even hold on to the gains right now. They miss on subscribers, and they get some work to do. And you know, a little bit bigger picture here, folks, right? I'm talking about maybe you get into this equity at 88 bucks. Maybe you're looking longer term. Now, you back it up on a monthly, okay? You're at 88 bucks. You're getting into this equity almost where it was trading at 10 years ago. Absolutely remarkable. Now, that was at the heel end of quite an acceleration. But you want to see, I mean, check this out, right? This is where my dad talks about it. You need a consolidation after a move like that, right? Well, Disney trades, folks, from 28 bucks up to 120 bucks. You do it over the period of about three to four years. And yeah, and then we have a 10 year basing. Things got a little bit crazy in 2019. Okay, now zooming in on the action since 2019, they really plowed through some big blockbusters in 2019. I think they had seven different films that grossed a billion dollars, something like that. Streaming was coming into line as well. This acceleration in April of 2019 is when they announced the plans for streaming. I think they started at 599. Remember, they were going to undercut the price in Netflix. Market loved it. They go live in November. They loved it as well. Uh, COVID hits. The thing takes off to 203. But bigger picture, okay, you're getting into prices Disney was at 10 years ago, man. And what I would do, though, is that I would scale in. That's the point of that, okay? You don't have to load up position at 88 bucks. Let's say you want to buy 100 shares of this thing. Um, you know, buy, buy, buy 25 shares now, buy 25 in three months, 25 in three months after that, and 25 in three months after that. You scale into the position over a period of nine months. Keep the money that you might be in that equity ad on the sideline. You're collecting almost 5% overnight if you got it in the right money market fund. 
Uh, so something to think about. The other thing you could do is you can sell puts below the market potentially, right? In some of these areas, just stuff to think about, man, when you're at these prices. S&P is approaching 4,600, okay? So we all know there is risk to the downside. Market trades lower, everything's gonna trade lower. But I think they're at the point, man. You see it. Everything's going wrong for Disney right now. The CEO is out. Iger's back. They're doing a deal with ESPN. They're probably going to ditch ABC. They're probably going to ditch FX. Um, they're going to try and trim some of those costs at the expense of some of the growth. But the market is okay with that right now, man, because that's what they need to do to stem some of those losses and some of the spending that's going on on Disney+. Plus. And I bet they're going to ratchet up the ad supported network, which is why you're seeing them jack up the prices, jack up the prices on Disney the no ad version. It's going to be a bummer, man. I mean, that's what makes streaming so great in the beginning, right? No ads. Everybody loves it. You binge watch, binge watch a show on Netflix. You watch 10 straight episodes um, of House of Cards. That was one of the first big ones, right? Not a single ad in there. So things are changing and we'll see where we go from there. All right. What else we got pulled up? Let's take a look. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, the AI picture college i got a lot of articles minneapolis this one was an interesting one yesterday i was reading this one yesterday they still have it up here on the front page first american city to tame inflation owes its success to affordable housing housing is such a big component right now of inflation that statistically okay cities where housing is not a problem where costs are not rising inflation is not a problem that's what they'll tell you okay and that's why, you know, the rent equivalent for an owned property really doesn't matter as much because your mortgage isn't going up, right? So in certain areas where housing prices are not increasing, you're not seeing a rise in the rent equivalent of that property. But people's mortgages don't go up. So it's a theoretical amount, and Europe doesn't even use that component for their CPI, okay? You've seen these articles talked about. The reason why I bring it up is because They've tamed inflation, but guess what? The, I was listening to a segment on Bloomberg Radio yesterday on this, and the analyst at the end, or, or the reporter at the end, I'm not sure who they were talking to. It might have been one of the authors of this article. But they kind of ended it with, well, you talk to people in Minneapolis, though, and they're still they're still paying. You know, They still see the price tag on their grocery bills. They still, still see the price tag of what they're paying, and it doesn't seem like they're getting a lot of reprieve. Versus, right, I have friends that, you know, Florida still has a hot bed of inflation going on right now. Well, why is that, folks? Because everybody's moving to Florida. Real estate prices are through the roof. And I sarcastically said, um, you know, yeah, let me get on my um, soap box and, and tell you how angry I am that real estate prices keep going up, right? For people that own properties, man, that's not a problem. For people paying rent, it is a problem. The rent equivalent model of that, not really a problem, folks. So interesting how it plays out. And this one talks about affordable housing. Uh, one of the things going on in St. Petersburg, which is great, is the ability to add accessory dwelling units, ADUs. It seems like something that people would be more open to, right? Because it's always not in my backyard, man, right? I'm all for affordable housing. Just don't put it behind my house, whatever it is. We all know how it goes. Affordable housing units are a great way to add affordable housing within single family neighborhoods they're doing it in st pete my dad's built some tremendous adus on the back of his properties out there and it's an amazing way to maximize the land value without changing the way everything is done now minneapolis eliminated zoning that allowed only single family homes and since 2018 they've invested almost a third of a billion dollars on rental assistance and subsidies so They've calmed that one, but there's a lot that goes into that article. So I want to bring it up and just uh, – it was interesting how they ended the uh, the discussion yesterday on Bloomberg Radio talking about, well, people in Minneapolis, they don't really feel it though because when they show up at the grocery store, they still got a bill that hits them with an inflation number that they realize is high, et cetera, right, nonetheless. All right, what else we got pulled up here? Let's see. Yeah, Alibaba. We'll take a look at Alibaba. Reports solid earnings, beat revenue rises – most in September of 2021. We take a look at Baba as we come into this final break and markets continue higher. Alibaba up by about 5.6%. You talk about a pullback, man. You wanna see something? Is that as far back as it goes? Yeah, it is, the monthly. That's as far back as it goes. You get into Alibaba in 2014, you break even in 2023. 
that doesn't quite seem fair with what China's done over 10 years. But the market doesn't have to be fair, man. Quite the pullback. S&P's right now. Almost at pre-market session. Uh, session highs, not pre-market. 45.30. We're up by 45 points. One more segment, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Don't go away. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the CPI report out today. Seems like the market's happy with that number, with the S&Ps continuing higher, making new highs for the day, up 48 points right now, trading at 45.33. We get the NASDAQ 100 up by 213 right now. And, folks, this coming Monday, can't believe it's already Thursday, man. We got our man Teddy Kegstad. He's got a webinar coming up on candlesticks. Check it out on the front page of TFNN.com. Japanese candlestick pattern. Stock and option strategies. Teddy has written a book on candlesticks, folks. He's doing a 60 minute webinar this Monday, $97. He's going to be over candlestick patterns, how to use them for equity and option trades. Uh, 97 bucks. You can't go wrong. It'll be archived, folks. You'll be in there with Teddy for an hour. We should have a great group in there. Check it out. Nothing recurring. You're not signed up for a newsletter. $97 one time for an hour long webinar with Teddy on candlestick patterns for equity and option strategies. That is Monday. So check it out as time is flying. And as we finish up the program, the Panama Canal. Yeah, check that out, right? 
154 commercial vessels are waiting to cross the Panama Canal with an average wait time of three weeks, 21 days. Uh, the Panama Canal Authority has reduced the number of ships allowed to pre-book transit. They have a drought going on, so they can't make it through there to the same degree. 40% of all U.S. container traffic travels through the Panama Canal every year. This is going to get worse before it gets better, one expert said. Pretty interesting. See where that goes. And then we'll finish it off with some real estate. Why not? As we have uh, CPI numbers, right? We talked a lot about rent, owner equivalent rent, et cetera. Average Manhattan rent just hit a new record of $5,588. Now, I love how they break down the average, and then they give us the median, okay? The median is the middle number, folks. If you got... 100 people who are renting, you take the 50th person. That is far different from taking the average because the average will be skewed sometimes to the upside, especially in an area like Manhattan, where you probably have rentals that are running a million dollars a unit on the high end, shifts the average up high. The average, almost 5,600, even the median, $4,400 a month. The kicker in all of this, folks, is that you got almost half of the space filled in offices, but it does not matter. Appreciate you kicking off the day, folks. Don't forget about Teddy on the front page. Stay tuned. Basil Chapman's coming up right now with the Tiger.